explain to us, right? How could someone steal some my, or anything for that matter from inside a police station? Explain to me how that happened. All right. And in doing so, you have to be mindful of the fact that the matter is sub judice, the matter is before the court. So there is a lot that I, I wouldn't and cannot say in terms of the investigation. But let me just clear up some ambiguities because I have followed social media because that's part of what I do. And I've, right. seen, I've seen quite a lot of comments that, you know, unless and until you understand, I think it's better to just, you know, keep your comments to yourself. And I say that guardedly, based on what I have seen. June after 2004, the Sutter's police station were destroyed. And so the government of Grenada had to find an accommodation for the Sutter's police station. Fortunately, we were, we were relocated in what was designed to be a supermarket. Being that as it may, I do not know all of the contractual arrangement that went between landlord and tenant for us to um, have the building. But what I can tell you is the fact that there are some you know, deficiencies with the design for a police station. Because it was not built for a police station, you know, it was adopted, and so there are some retrofitting that was done to ensure that we can comfortably operate from the location. If you know the location, the extreme rear of the location is in boundary with a property that is behind. The left of the location is in boundary with somebody else's property that the persons walk, walk right up to the police station. There is a fence on either side. We do not have the access, the police do not have the access to walk around that building because of the design. So this is not like the, 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 the St. Paul's or the South St. George police station or the Central police station where you can walk around the building and you have access to the exterior perimeters of the building. In this case, that is not the design that we have. The front part of the building is used for the, the administrative section of the police force, accommodation for, for, um, for barracks, etc. The extreme rear of the building is an addition to the building that you can only access from inside of the building. So if you are in the back of the building or on the side of the building, I will not see you from upstairs. I will not see you from the front of the building. So it is not impossible for somebody to be at the back of the building and not be seen. If you see the design or you know the building, you'll understand what I'm talking about. You can walk right up to that building at the back and nobody will see you based on, based on that design. And the part of the police station that we are speaking of here is not a part that is accessed frequently because it's where the, the, the storeroom is, if, if, if I can say that. And so we only use that part of the building when we need to. You know, it's not a place where police officers travel in and out often. So Hold something on. could be happening there. Look up in there. Sorry, sorry to cut you. Are you saying that the, the entire building is not safe? Is no, I'm not talking, no, no, I'm not talking about safety. The building itself, it's safe. The building the, is safe. The building is safe. The building has two parts. Let me put it this way. The building has two parts. There is the front part of the building. And there was an addition that was done to the design. It seems to me, right. subsequent to the erection and construction of the building, there was an additional part that was added on to the back. Right. So it's kind of disjointed in a, in a way, although it is attached to the building. And because right. the, the, the boundaries in the back and on the two sides bounded with other properties, we cannot walk around the building. We do not have that access based on the design of the building. So people who are saying, well, this is, it is impossible for, for uh, marijuana to be stolen from a police station and the police don't know. Well, I do invite all of the persons who say that to take a visit to the Sutter's police station. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Van Cohen, in all due respect, right, I understand that. But if you're looking at something as hard evidence as uh, that amount of marijuana, 270, whatever the, the total was, it was a big number, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be secured in a very secure location. You're not going to put it in the, in the least secure location. And if Sutter's police station is not secured, uh, that part of it is not fully secured, why have it there? So it leads a lot of people to, to, to come to the conclusion that this looks like this looks like it's some kind of cover up. You put it in the least least secured location, but in the least secured police station. Let me answer you this way. We have occupied that building since 2004. Right. We have never had an issue in what you consider to be, 
you know, an insecure place. You see, because we take all of the measures to ensure that that part of the building, though as I indicated before, we take all of the measures to ensure that where these items were, was safe enough. And time has proven us to some point because we've been from then to now. So it, it, this is not a case where we have put the, the items there last week and it went away this week. We've been there for a number of years. We've never had an issue in the building. So, you know, the creativity and ingenuity of those who are involved, you know, just happen to be what it is. We have learned from that. We have done some more retrofitting, not only of this police station, but we have already started to, to install CCTVs, et cetera, in all of our police stations. That has just hastened the process because we realized in this particular case, we were not quick enough to be able to have all of the securities that we would have liked to have in place. How did the nine individuals know that the weed was there and they could access it in that kind of way? That's an interesting point. Again, I, I do not want to go into the evidential nature of it, but let me say it this way. The, the adjacent land that is owned by whoever owns that land, that land walks right up to the side of that building. In fact, the boundary, the, the property is in that boundary. And that is somebody else's land. The design of the building, if you know marijuana well, you can smell that from a distance. So the design of the building does allow perhaps for the scent to go out. How they actually know that will be anybody's guess. I have had some information. We've done an investigation. That's why we were able to charge the people that we charge. And I am sure in due time, we will all know and hear the evidence and be able to come to our own conclusion as to how they were able to access the property and access the job there. I, I cannot put that out in the public domain now ahead of a, a, a court hearing, but I am comfortable and satisfied of what we have done so far and not in a position to blame, you know, anybody for what has happened. If people want to do any sort of crime and the opportunity presents itself, they will do that.